Greetings and welcome to how to use your PlayStation 4 wireless controller, either wired or wireless, with your Steam overlay, your Steam apps, your games, everything pretty much on, even maybe the desktop that I'm still experimenting with. However, there is only one thing I must warn you and that right now I am currently experiencing some kind of weird bug or issue, where after I set it up the first time, I can only ever connect my PS4 controller into that very same exact USB port in order to have it work properly. So if you follow this guide along, make sure you that USB port that you plan on using is always available and will not be blocked off by anything and hopefully it's not breaking or anything else. Now, the other thing you need to know is that if you have an external keypad of any sort, like a Razer Nostromo or an external number pad or anything like that, that you have it unplugged because well, for some reason, Windows tends to prioritize those types of devices over your controllers. And when you go into a game hoping to use your controller, like it happens with so many games, you must unplug those external keypads in order for the control to be detected properly and to function in any way. Now, onto how to actually get it done. So right here on our Steam Blade, we're going to go up here to the top right and go into big picture mode. This is a necessity, you must do it, there's no way around this. Yes, 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 fancy intro. Now from here, click on this clock here for the little settings, and from here, go into controller settings down here. And make sure you tick this on. Also. When you click it on right there, it's going to say that warning right there. It's the exact same one. If you have currently any controllers connected, you must unplug them and plug them back in after the, that warning goes away. It is part of the process. Just go ahead and do it. Now that it's on, we can actually plug the controller back in. So here goes mine into the very same port that I used the first time. It gets detected by Windows and there it is. When that pops up, it's going to ask you to register it to your account. I'm not really sure what this means, but I'm pretty sure it is somehow saving our Steam Cloud settings on the controller itself. I'm not really sure how they're able to do that, but that's just how it is. You can name your controller, you can set whatever color you want, color brightness, color saturation, rumble preferences. So yeah, it's actually pretty nicely supported now. Let's leave that in pink, leave everything else, submit, and congratulations, it is now set to your account. And how do you know it is actually working well? For starters, you're navigating this entire menu with the controller. If you can't do this, something went wrong and you might want to restart from the very beginning. So now to make sure it is actually running properly in a game, let's try it here. Let's run it on Final Fantasy X too, shall we? Now, unfortunately, this menu here doesn't work with mouse, so we just have to use the mouse for that one. However, once you get into the main menu from this here, we should be able to use it to navigate the menu. And as you can see right there, that little arm says is that we can press the middle button to bring that up, just like the regular Steam overlay on your PC and any other game. You can also do that with the controller, which is actually pretty cool. And here we are. As you can see, no problems at all. If we click load, everything's worked properly. I've got a save here already, which is pretty nice. And yeah, you can even go over here and go to controller options and everything else and configure it here however you want. As you can see, you can do this on a per game set. You can split this into two if you so wanted. I've even heard that when you navigate as a desktop, you can set the trackpad to be a mouse. So yeah, that is all you need to know on how to set up your PS4 controller with your Steam overlay and everything else. It's actually very convenient because before I, this was actually released, I was actually using a third party app to, well, get my PS3 controller running on there. But anyway, that is it. Once you're done, you can actually just exit big picture mode and yeah, you are literally done. So hopefully this is actually useful. Remember that little bug I mentioned at the beginning of the video, be careful about that. I am currently inquiring to see if anything, anybody has found an answer to it, but hopefully you find it useful and we will see you next time.